normally there will be no difficulty in waking a subject. The difficulty is to induce the trance, not to terminate it. To awaken the majority of subjects, the mere suggestion that they will open their eyes and be wide awake at a given cue, such as counting six, the word six serving as the cue, is all that is necessary to terminate the trance. This method will be successful with practically everyone, all subjects. It is a sound method when instructing a subject to tell him that you will count, but this time that you will count backwards, that you will count 10, 9, 8, and so on, and that when you arrive at the number 1, it will be wide awake, and that it will feel much better for having rested. Do not waken subjects too abruptly. It is better to err on the side of doing so too slowly rather than too rapidly. If you are unable to wake a hypnotized subject, which is very unlikely, do not in any way be disturbed. See that he is resting comfortably and that he has no tight clothing, such as a necktie, to restrict his breathing. Then instruct him on these lines. I'm going to leave you to rest. In a short time, you will find that you will become restless. You will not know why, but you will want to wake up. When you feel this restlessness, you will start to count slowly to yourself, and you will find that when you get to 9 and 10, you will find yourself waking up. You will find that your eyelids begin to move as though they were going to open. By the time you get to 15, your eyes will open by themselves and you will be wide awake. Then leave your subject and in all probability he will awaken after a short rest. If he does not do so, do not be at all disturbed, but make arrangements so that he may be made comfortable either on a bed or a couch and give him the following instructions. You will continue to rest and you will shortly pass into a sound sleep from which you will awaken and feel refreshed. Do not let other people try to arouse him. The sleeper will awaken after a few minutes or at most a few hours sleep and will do so whether the hypnotist is present or not. No uneasiness should be entertained <clears throat> if a subject does not wake up immediately in response to your suggestions, for the trance state will of its own accord turn into ordinary sleep from which your subject will wake in a perfectly normal manner. The length of time he will sleep will be dependent on how tired his body is. In this way, hypnosis makes a possible degree of relaxation and recuperation, which would not have been possible through his ordinary sleep. Upon awakening from a hypnotic trance, the subject undergoes a change in consciousness. This can be described as a regaining of will, of memory, and of reasoning powers, a reentoriation or picking up of the threads of consciousness again. The time taken to awaken varies with different individuals. If any suggestions have been made to the hypnotized individual, the nature of which are antagonistic or contrary to his views, desires, or interest, there is every probability of his harboring a hostile feeling towards the hypnotist. He may be quite unconscious of this hostility which may express itself in a variety of ways. He may, for example, be critical of the hypnotist or of his methods of procedure and in consequence develop a mild resistance to the hypnotist's instructions to wake up. If this occurs, no uneasiness should be felt and the instructions given above should be followed. Some people on awakening may express disappointment with the experience. They may insist that they had heard everything that went on or that they were unaffected by the hypnotist. This arises out of misconceptions they entertain concerning the nature of hypnotism. The lack of consciousness and amnesia which 
they possibly anticipated is not experienced by some subjects until some hours have been spent in conditioning them. Nevertheless, though the individual may consciously believe that his trance was extremely light or that he has not been hypnotically affected, the suggestions which have been made to him in most cases will exercise influence. That is, unless the subject deliberately sets out very determinedly to prove that the suggestions will not work. It will sometimes be the experience of the hypnotist that someone whom he has hypnotized will, on waking, insist that he has not been hypnotized. This attitude may be maintained even though it may be demonstrated to the subject that he cannot open his eyes. Even then, some subjects will still insist that despite this evidence, they could have opened their eyes or stood up if they had wished. In these cases, the character structure of the individual in, is such that he cannot admit that he, had, that he has been dominated and was under the control of anyone else. The majority of people who insist that they have only experienced a light trance should have the nature of the hypnotic trance explained to them and should be told that it is perfectly normal that they should hear external noises <clears throat> and maintain rapport with the hypnotist. Don't, in, don't attempt to convince those who dogmatically maintain that they have not been hypnotized. Explanations will serve no useful purpose. The popular idea of the hypnotized person remembering nothing on waking applies only to a few subjects. People's reactions differ. The majority remember most of what occurred when they are hypnotized, but in the main, their recollections tend to be faulty. The fact must not be overlooked that our recollections in the waking state are likewise faulty. If, for example, a person is dozing, often he will indignantly, indignantly deny the fact. Some subjects on awakening can apparently remember everything that has occurred, but then the memories may fade in the manner a dream vanishes. Others on awakening may have no recollection or a very hazy one of which has occurred, but gradually details come back to them until they can recall everything that has happened. Suggestions made to the subject that he will forget everything that has occurred during a trance may or may not be effective. This, the effectiveness of the inhibiting suggestion is determined by how it affects the subject's pride, sense of independence, interest, morals, conscience, and general character structure. Also the nature of the material being repressed. An amnesia whilst awake may be created in respect of the events occurring in a hypnotic trance, but in subsequent trances the events may be remembered. In waking consciousness after being hypnotized, the individual may often recall phrases or happenings which have occurred during the hypnotic trance, but he may attribute these phrases and incidents to the work of his own imagination and be unaware that they are memory fragments of the trance. On the other hand, an hysterical subject is very likely to imagine during the hypnotic trance that incidents occurred which are purely products of his own imagination. On awakening a subject from the hypnotic state, the first question the hypnotist should ask himself is, is the subject wide awake and thoroughly aroused from the hypnotic state? He should reassure himself on this point and should, as, in, as an invariable rule, make certain that the subject is thoroughly wide awake and that no, trance, that no trace of the hypnotic state remains, and also that there are no uncancelled post-hypnotic suggestions other than those designed for the subject's own good, such as being able to relax, etc. Post-hypnotic suggestions are dealt with in the next video.